Welcome back to Newsroom, everyone. I'm Shaw Smith with your Middle East, the U.S. Entertainment News. I air on Fridays, and this is subject to change, whether or not I have an emergency or not. I bring you the latest on reforms and economics of Iraq and based on reports put out by the Middle East news media outlets. I do this weekly review, and it's based off my interest. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. Let's get right into the headlines. Iraq has increased its gold reserves by four tons to 152.6 tons, placing it in the world's 29th place among 100 gold reserves. The increases to financial stability and cash liquidity. Iraq's reserves are currently at 148.3 tons, with gold representing about 10% of the foreign exchange reserves. The United States, Germany, and Italy are the top gold reserves globally. And the Kurdish dancer Mauser Barzani met with the U.S. delegations led by a congressman Seth Moulton to discuss ways to deepen ties between the region and the U.S. The meeting focused on regional development and cooperation in key areas, with both sides agreeing on the need to accelerate reforms within the ministry of the Peshmerga. The meeting also discussed the resumption of oil experts from the Kurdistan region, preparations for the Kurdistan parliamentary, and the U.S. presidential elections and the complex geopolitical situation in the Middle East. The meeting reaffirmed the strong partnerships between the U.S. and the Kurdistan region in promoting peace and development. The picture you see here was taken by the Kurdistan 24. Iraq's finance minister, Taif Sami Mohammed, has emphasized the importance of adhering to timeable for achieving economic reforms. She's chaired a meeting to review the government's plan and procedures for financial, economic, and digital affairs, discussing challenges and the need for cooperation between all parties. This meeting aims to accelerate the pace of reforms in vital sectors and improving the standards of living for citizens. And speaking about finance, the Kurdistan Ministry of Finance and Economy has extended bank working hours on Fridays and Saturdays to facilitate biometric employee registration. The move aims to improve transparency and reduce salary distributions violations by using biometric data like fingerprints and iris scans. Iraq has completed its files to join the World Trade Organization, marking a significant step in the country's economic process. The Ministry of Commerce announced that Iraq's team, including members from all ministries, has completed all preparations to expedite the submission of Iraq's files to the international organization. The World Trade Organization was formed in 1994 to ensure freedom of trade, strengthening the trade system, increase investments and employment, and reduce prices through custom tariffs. Iraq's participation signifies the world's confidence in the economy and its desire to integrate into a global economy. Now we're waiting on a public announcement globally. The Trade Bank of Iraq has implemented measures to support exchange rate stability and prevent speculator exploitation. This includes increasing working hours in branches, limiting dollar grants to beneficiaries, and intensifying inspection procedures in financial transfer operations. And the Gulf Cooperation Council, the GCC, has signed a contract to implement the Gulf Electricity Market Linkage Project with Iraq. This will enhance energy security, supply Iraq with 3.94 terawatt hours annually at competitive prices and reduce public expenditures. The project aims to improve efficiency and flexibility of electricity systems, strengthen economic and social bonds, and reduce dependence on expensive traditional energy sources. Speaking about energy, the EXIM Bank approves $297 million for energy projects in Iraq, generating power through waste heat. Stellar Energy, Americans will provide services supporting 600 U.S. jobs. 
And what we've all been waiting for, the Central Bank of Iraq has launched the National Strategy for Bank Lending, aiming to regulate foreign trade financing, build international banking relations, introducing local currency, and transition from monetary to digital economies. The strategy focuses on restructuring the government and private banks, supporting micro, small, medium, and large enterprises, and supporting youth. The goal is to increase credit granted to private sector and finance micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises. The central bank is also working to rehabilitate bank restricted from dealing in U.S. dollars to comply with international standards. And a government consultant revealed that the features of the 2025 facial budget schedule following the federal general budget law number 13 of 2023, the Ministry of Finance is preparing the general budget schedule based on indicators of implementing the budget over the first two years. Major reconstruction projects will continue. Iraq's central bank dollar sales reached over $260 million in auction of currency sales, with most sales going to boost balances abroad in the form of remittances and credits up 97% from cash sales. And the Social Protection Authorities in Baghdad has launched an e-shopping service for social protection beneficiaries using the key card. The service allows beneficiaries to buy from various stores at discounted prices with subsidy amounts remaining in the card for three months. The services will initially be launched in Baghdad governorates, benefiting 388,276 families and reducing dependence on paper cash. And the Central Bank of Iraq has announced that all civil servants in the Kurdistan region must open a bank account as part of an agreement between the Kurdistan regional government and the Iraqi federal government. This initiative is similar to the Iraq's Totten project aimed to modernize Iraq's financial infrastructure and promote transparency in the public sector payroll system. So much innovation is going on in Iraq. The central bank is implementing a banking reform strategy to achieve digital transformation in the sector. It's been going on since 2017. The cooperation between the governments, banks, and electronic payment companies has led to quantitative boom in electronic payments and modern banking technology. The central bank is currently examining 70 requests for approvals of the new digital banks, aiming to bridge the technical gap with other countries. And you've been watching Newsroom Weekly Review. I'm Chella Smith with your Middle East U.S. entertainment news on reforms and economics of Iraq. I try to bring you the latest in our news without having to keep up with all the different outlets. I'm here every week. So don't forget to subscribe and turn those notification bells on. If you like my content, you can give me a thumbs up. If you really like my content, you can always see a super thanks or a super chat in the comment section below. Again, thank you for being a subscriber and thank you for visiting Newsroom Chelsea Smith for your trusted in our news. I'll see you guys. Take care. Make sure you join us Fridays, 4 p.m. with Newsroom Updates with Chelsea Smith Entertainment News. 